Showing on Law Weekly today, we continue a discussion on the suspension of Justice Walter Onoge as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. We also bring you reactions of lawyers on the two-day boycotts directive by the Nigerian Bar Association that lawyers should boycott the courtrooms. Hello again. Welcome to Law Weekly. I'm Victoria Ido. Over the past weeks, the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, has generated a lot of controversy and drawn a lot of scrutiny from lawyers and non-lawyers. We had a chat with a senior advocate of Nigeria, Ulisa Agbakoba. He talks about the legality of the action of President Muhammad Buhari. He also talks about the impact this will have on the judiciary as a whole. The president cannot interfere with the judiciary. The president has limited power. The executive stays within the confines of its own power. Same with the judiciary and the legislature. So we have a concept of limited power as opposed to absolute power. So what the president did was to interfere with the functioning of the judicial process. He has no power over the judiciary. The process is simple. If a judge misbehaves, the NJC punishes. And many cases in the Supreme Court has decided this point. So Onogen may well be guilty of what has been alleged. But that's not what concerns lawyers. We are concerned that the process has not been followed in a reading of Onogen before the CCT. Many cases have said if you want to deal with judicial officers, the first port of call is the NGC. So what beggars belief is why the federal government, knowing full well the procedure, failed to follow it and then got a backroom expert order that the president quickly and efficiently obeyed, whereas he has not obeyed the order in respect of El Zakizaki or the one concerning Dasuki, in spite of seven court decisions that they should. So something is fishy here. And on Wednesday, they bring the, the, the CCT makes a complaint. Thursday, the charge is drafted. Friday, it is prepared. Monday, arraignment. Nigeria doesn't work that efficiently. So it raises a number of red flags. Things are not changing. It just raises a number of red flags. And for us, you know, people may say, but well, again, as confessed, he said, I made a mistake. That may well be so. But the simple truth is, the day we, seek, seek, we, we cease to have process, rule of law, we are gone. And the whole idea is to, is, is to ensure that our president does not become an absolute dictator. And therefore, the only way we can stop the president is to have strong institutions. You don't want the judiciary to suddenly say, you know what, the next CGM will be Elisa Bakala. Nobody will agree because this, the president will say, I don't accept it. He's not a judge. So even the judiciary is limited in the exercise of its own power. But, so it is the three arms, the trinity of powers. The judiciary, nomination, the president approval, Senate confirmation that gives effect to the office of the uh, CJN or any judicial officer. And to remove the same process. The NJC will recommend the president may decline. But if the president accepts, he sends it to the Senate and it's done. So the simple problem here is the failed to follow procedure. That's why I petitioned um, NJC. The process of appointing the new CJN must first start from the NJC. They will have a meeting, they will shortlist people. Not even the NJC, it will start with the Federal Judicial Service Commission who will shortlist names bring to the NJC. The NJC will review, pick two, send to the CJN, the, sorry, to, to the president who then picks and forwards to the Senate. So neither in the case of CJN Onogen or the purported acting CJN Tanko Mohammed did these procedures, you know, play out. That's why there's all this, uh, you know, uh, could the new CGN 
Tanko Mohammed have refused to be sworn in? Absolutely. Because Tanko Mohammed, incidentally, was part of the panel of NGC members that sat to remove the acting CJ, CJ of Abia State. Theodore Oji, exercising what he thought were powers conferred on him, removed the CJ, CJ of Abia unlawfully. And I was in the NGC then, and I said, this is not right. And we wrote to him, no, you can't do this. What he now did was to invite one of the judges to come before him and be sworn in as acting CJ, which he, that judge did. So the panel set up by the NGC, of which Tanko Mohammed was part, dismissed the judge. So my petition against Tanko Mohammed was that having taken part in the NGC procedures and being aware, why would you have offered yourself? Nobody forced you. There's no suggestion that he was forcibly, you know, kidnapped and taken to the, to the uh, Asso Rock to be sworn in. Although he looked like it on t television, he looked terrified. But the fact is, he hasn't told us that he was forced. So he's got to go. But by the president's remark, he, he said a lot of things were going wrong with the judiciary, which was some of the reasons why he took the action that he took. You know, the president's statement represented executive judgment. He sat in judgment, you know, over what he thought were lapses. If he thought that the, uh, the CJN or the judges were not doing well, he has the proper procedure to lay those complaints. He hasn't done that. He can't, at a press conference, swearing in an unconstitutional acting CJN, make the type of, you know, remarks he made. Those remarks were highly prejudicial highly prejudicial and unbecoming of the office of president of Nigeria. I was shocked personally to hear him say all what he said. To even give you a worse, to give you a more graphic example, suppose a policeman were to see me shoot somebody dead. The response is not to shoot me, it's to arrest me, take me to the police station, charge me with murder, take me to court. That's the process. But if you shoot me, then people will say that's not correct. So that's what's playing out here all of this what's the implication in the long term the long term is that if we allow it it will be executive lawlessness and if we allow absolute power nigeria, is, nigeria cannot be a democracy is that we want a democracy or an absolute monarch and i think nigerians all want to have a democracy which is why we fought to remove military rule in 1998 so this is one of the most vicious attempts and assaults on Nigeria's constitution. And the broader point that I think some who don't support the CJN seem to miss is it affects their own personal liberty. Because if they can do this to the CJN, whether it's right or wrong, they can take you and put you in prison and people will scream, nothing will happen. But the rule of law consecrated in the constitution in chapter four describes our rights and those rights must be obeyed even by the president so section 292 describes the removal process of the cjn that has to be obeyed no matter the guilt of the cjn so we need to hold people accountable malami is also a senior advocate so there's the legal practitioners uh, privileges committee the question whether what he has done does not constitute an instance to consider whether his silk should not be removed, for me, is an important issue. So that they, it, will, it will affect them personally. Vice President Oshibajo, former Attorney General, Professor of Law, Senior Advocate, sitting down there, he can come round. He can, he can come round and bite them back. So for me, I'm not interested in the organ issue. I'm interested in following process. And if you had followed process by taking the matter before the NJC and showing evidence that this man is corrupt, what makes you think NJC wouldn't have acted?